Bring in our U.S. correspondent now, Benjamin Heyer. Benjamin, thank you so much for joining us. Can you wrap up what today was about? What are the biggest concerns raised by U.S. legislators? And what was the argument that South Africa has put forward? Well, let's start, I think, with what one of the members of the South African team, the media team that's in Washington, D.C., told us in just the past couple of minutes. They say that there's no official statement yet to talk about today's proceedings. I'm sure that will come in the next few hours. But that both sides are discussing a variety of matters related to trade and investment with the U.S., including... Uh, what's known as AGOA, that uh, uh, a, a trade arrangement where uh, dozens of African countries, sub-Saharan African countries, are able to access the US market tariff-free. That really is the centre of discussions. And the statement from the media team goes on to say South Africa, of course, would like it renewed. But given the delicate situation, as they call it, in the geopolitical landscape, the high-level ministerial team is hoping to, to butter up the US, essentially, to give them a better chance. And, and that ge uh, geopolitical situation they, they refer to, of course, is South Africa's relationship with Russia. Let me just read to you from a letter that US lawmakers have written in past weeks. It says, we're seriously concerned that uh, hosting the 2023 AGOA Forum in South Africa, which is due to happen later this year, would serve as an implicit endorsement of South Africa's damaging support, as US lawmakers call it, for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And a number of US lawmakers here, as you have said, have been making the case that they don't want to see that happen and threatening South Africa's involvement in AGOA, which would be hugely significant for South Africa, given the fact that it is um, the uh, largest beneficiary under that trade agreement. So what both sides are doing now, and we're going to hopefully, as I say, see a statement, uh, is hashing out those details to try to make sure that the relationship stays cool and cordial, and that the South Africa is able to maintain its geopolitical stances, whilst also ensuring it continues to have access to that trade agreement. Benjamin, what would you say is the sentiment at the moment? Does South Africa risk being cut out of a new deal? It has happened to other African countries. Well, the U.S. Congress is considering this, and so we might see a decision uh, by lawmakers uh, later this year on whether that, that action is taken. You know, from the South African side, I guess the hope is that th that is merely rhetoric, that is a threat to try to bring both sides to the table, but it remains a very credible threat, and it is entirely possible from a legislative standpoint. What these talks are trying to do is to well, I guess bring down the temperature in regard to that and try to uh, force some sort of agreement on, on other issues. Look, uh, the Biden administration here has recognised that there is incredible potential, both economically and politically, in terms of the US's relationship with sub-Saharan uh, countries, including South Africa. There is an appetite in Washington to make sure that South Africa is on their side. But there is increased wariness from the White House about South Africa's position when it comes to the war in Ukraine, and also looking ahead to that BRICS summit in August, which if Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, attends, according to the International Criminal Court, he should be arrested on the ground. And there will be very keen eyes in Washington on what sort of stance South Africa takes in regard to that meeting, and again, the wider relationship with Russia. It's key for South Africa, of course, to maintain those trade links with the US. Benjamin, just lastly, what are the risks for the U.S. if they were to cut us out of this deal? Not, not just for them, but also to their, for their relationship with other Southern African countries. Look, it's a great question, and the U.S. faces this battle not just with South Africa, but a lot of other, you know, major players on the global stage. How do you sort of uh, counter the position that these states might have vis-a-vis -vis Russia, the war in Ukraine, which is a, a key foreign policy um, uh, challenge for the U.S. administration? How do you sort of balance that with wanting to maintain strong economic relations? In the past couple of weeks, Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister, visited Washington. Washington, D.C., and President Biden was faced exactly with this dilemma. And in that situation, he chose to side with India, realising that the economic potential is more important than whatever grievances the administration here has with India's relationship with Russia. Uh, again, a sign that there is clear value for the United States in these relationships. It is not yet known whether 
the same will apply to the US's relationship with South Africa, but if it does, then it may very well be the case, as it was with India, that the US decides to park some of those concerns when it comes to South Africa's foreign policy, instead to try and ensure that it maintains that economic relationship. But just to be clear on this, this is a program that is effectively uh, provided by the US, and it is South Africa that is the greatest beneficiary, and it is therefore in South Africa's interest to make this work. Thank you so much, Benjamin. That was our US correspondent, correspondent Benjamin Heyer.